Right, in this video we're going to look at some exercises to assist with back and neck issues and also to aid in better functionality. The soft tissues throughout the body, they affect lots of different things and they have a knock-on effect around the body because they're all interlinked. To put this into context for you and uh, simplify it a little bit, if we have, say, tight hamstrings, the tight hamstrings can affect the, uh, the angle of the pelvis, it can rotate the pelvis, and so with that, we then start having problems to the front of the, uh, the pelvic hip region. So we start then having tighter, uh, tighter quadriceps, tighter hip flexors. But if we take to the other side of things, and we look at the hip flexors being too tight, the rotation forwards then starts to create problems within the lower back as well, which can have a knock-on knock effect up the body. We take it up the body, and if we have shoulders coming forwards and rounded, then again we start having tightening, adaptive shortening of the shoulders and also the chest muscles. But then what happens is we have a knock-on effect to the, uh, the middle of the back for the rhomboids and the traps being under this tension all the time. So we have to address the body as a whole, really, and look at all of those soft tissues. We have fascia, which are collagen fibres throughout the uh, whole of the body, with aponeurosis. Uh, we have the, uh, the tissues uh, such as the muscles and the tendons. And again, all of these, they work uh, in symmetry with each other and symbiotically. So we have to look at the system as a whole, not just treating sometimes the, uh, the one symptom, but treating the cause of the whole piece. We've got three exercises in total. And we're going to start from the neck, go down to the thoracic region, and then down to the lumbar region. However, each of the exercises works throughout the whole of the spinal piece. So let's start with the neck to start with. So we're going to take to the floor to start with, to, to make it easier for us. Now with this we need to be very strict on how we, do, uh, how we sort of uh, uh, do the actual exercises and how we place our body. So lying down to start with, knees around about 90 degrees. What we need to do is slightly rotate the pelvis towards us. We then take the lower back onto the floor. We must keep that lower back on, back on the floor. Shoulder blades, we pinch together slightly, arms just to the side, nice and relaxed. At this point now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the chin down towards my chest. But what I'm doing is, I'm rotating the skull. And what I'm trying to do is push upwards and up and away so that I elongate the spine. So by pushing down on the lower back, also taking the head up and the chin down, then what happens is I elongate all the way through, flattening the spine, so all the soft tissues along, they start to get stretch. I'm going to hold the stretch for around about 10 seconds, then rotate up and through nice and gently, and then back down again. So let's go through the exercise. So I rotate my pelvis slightly, pushing small of the back into the floor, my shoulder blades are back, and from this point, I now take my chin to chest. Pushing upwards with my spine, elongating out, keeping sure my lower back is on the floor, and then up. So to reiterate, it's not just rotating the head down, it's also pushing upwards as we go to try to flatten the neck out onto the floor as well. Now we can take this onto the wall as well, and we can take it, which makes it just a little bit harder, because we start having the downward sort of forces of gravity. So we take the back close to the wall, so and the, the hips close to the wall, flatten the back against the wall, just place my hands nice and gently onto the legs or onto, uh, onto the floor as well. So, flush the back against the wall, I pinch my shoulder blades backwards, I then take my head to the wall. From here, chin goes down to the chest, but I'm trying to get my head going upwards, so keep concentrating on that upwards movement. Okay, so now we've done the cervical spine, the neck, let's go on to the thoracic region. So the thoracic region again, we start on the floor, do the easier option. Again, legs are 90 degrees. 
We're doing exactly the same things with the, with the, with the body. We keep, need to keep our pelvis slightly rotated. We keep the small back into the floor. We are pinching back the shoulder blades. And also we're going to do the same thing with our neck. But what we're going to do now is we're going to change it and bring the hands into this as well, or the arms into this as well. So we have two options. So the easier option is, once I've set my back, set my shoulder blades. I take my arms to the air, into the air. I take my wrists together. I now take them up, placing my hands onto the head. I then rotate the elbows backwards. I'm pushing the small of the back, back into the floor. I'm taking the elbows to the floor, pinching the shoulder blades together. What I do is rotate and bring myself out. The harder version, again, same with the pelvis, same with the lower back. Pinch the shoulders together. Take the arms up into the air. Rotate. Now from here, take the arms back and up. Chin to chest. And rotate and up. Again, repeat. So again, small back into the floor, shoulder blades in. Up with the hands, rotating, chin to chest, keep flattening the back out, keep pushing upwards with the arms, keep trying to elongate the spine and the neck. Okay, taking onto the wall. So again, makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit harder, you haven't got support to the floor. Small the back against, pinch the shoulder blades in, head against the wall, hands out, take them onto the head, elbows back, chin, down to chest, elongating up, keep pushing the small back into the wall, keep elongating, keep easing those elbows backwards, and back it out. Onto the harder version, take the arms up, so again, small the back into the wall, pinch the shoulder blades together, head to the wall, arms out, up, rotate, chin to chest, keep pushing the small back into the wall, keep pushing upwards the arms, Keep taking the chin down to chest. And come out of it. So now we have the thoracic spine done. Down to the lumbar spine now, the last exercise. So with this, we, could, we, we use the wall to start with. So what we need to do is take the hips as close to the wall as possible. From this position, we're going to take the legs up the wall. I'm keeping the small leg back onto the floor again. I keep my shoulder blades back in, onto the wall, onto the floor as well. My head in a neutral position. What I now do is I push my legs up as far as I can, straighten them out. So I'm going to feel it into the hamstrings, into the calves. From here I pull my toes towards me down to the floor. I rotate my feet inwards as far as they will go. And from this position now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands up, do the exact same as I did before, rotate the thumbs out and take my arms all the way back, and then chin to chest, pushing with the arms, keep pulling the feet in and down, keep straightening the legs. Bring the arms out, rotate, ease off with the legs. And again, legs at the wall, push up as far as we can, pull the toes down towards you, rotate inwards, Keep the small back on the floor, hands into the air, and then take them up and back, pushing up, chin down to chest, flat the spine. Keep pushing, keep elongating. Keep pushing the feet, pulling the feet inwards. And release. Okay, there we have our three exercises. So look at perfection in movement. Take it nice and slowly, do each stage, stage by stage, and easing through it. It's that lengthening out and the flattening of the back and quality of movement. Thank you.